to the great detectives of old time radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radio detectives. I do want to encourage you, if you're making travel plans, to check johnnydollarair.com. johnnydollarair.com is our Priceline affiliate link, so if you ought to purchase through there, part of the purchase price benefits the great detectives of old-time radio at no additional cost to you. So remember, when making your travel plans, check johnnydollarair.com first. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, the original air date, September 29th, 1953, and the title is The Amita Buddha Matter. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Hanley Conrad, Johnny. Oh, how are you, Mr. Conrad? Fine. Are you employed? Not at the moment. How about catching the next plane for Los Angeles? All right. What is it? We insure a Mr. William McEdwards. His home burned down last night and he was killed in the fire. Who do I see? C.H. Anderson, Beverly Hills Chief of Police. All right, I'll call the airport and make a reservation. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum present these weekly adventures of Johnny Dollar because they know that millions of you enjoy Johnny Dollar. That's true of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, too. It's enjoyed by millions, day in and day out. People find that chewing on a smooth, delicious piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum somehow makes time pass more pleasantly. Whether you're working, driving, shopping, or just taking things easy, that good, tasty chewing gives you enjoyment and satisfaction. So always keep a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. And whenever you want a refreshing, delicious treat, chew a stick. You'll like it. You really will. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, World Insurance, and Indemnity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Amita Buddha matter. Expense account item one, $193.55. Plane fare and incidentals between Hartford and Los Angeles. I arrived at the Los Angeles airport the next morning, rented a car, and drove it to the hotel, where I registered and put in a call to Chief Anderson at the Beverly Hills Police Department. An hour later, we were sitting in his city hall office. Lieutenant Hankins got the call at seven minutes after six in the evening, placed by a neighbor. House was almost completely gutted by the time the fire department got it under control. Hankins found McEdward's body in the bedroom. He'd been alone in the house? Yeah. His wife returned about an hour later, found her husband dead. Swell homecoming. How'd the fire start? We're not sure. Started in the bedroom. One thing's pretty certain. It wasn't an accident. What do you mean? The first cursory examination by the coroner's deputy indicated the victim had burned to death. This morning, we got another report. Further examination at the morgue showed McEdwards had been stabbed. What? Mm Mm-hmm. Also hit over the head, severe skull fracture. So you think McEdwards was killed first and the fire started to cover the crime? Yeah. That's how I came into it. Ordinarily, Lieutenant Hankins would handle the whole thing. Uh... This murder angle is confidential, Dollar, until the coroner files an official report. Sure. Any suspects? No, not yet. Well, thank you, Chief Anderson. I think I'll go out and talk to the widow. That's all right with you. Sure. Uh, But don't mention the murder angle. I won't. Where is she staying? With her mother in Encino. Yes? My name is Dollar, Johnny Dollar. I'd like to speak to your daughter, if I may. What's it about? The death of her husband. 
I'm a special investigator for the insurance company. Well, Mr. Dollar, my daughter's not feeling very well. I know it's difficult, Mrs. Rizzinelli, but if it's at all possible, I'd like to see her. Get it over with. Get it out of the way. Well, who is it, Mom? Oh, she's up. She was resting. Well, who is it? This is Mr. Dollar, honey. He's, uh... Uh, Is it about Bill? Yes, it is. He's a special investigator, an insurance investigator. Come in. Thanks. I was lying down, Mr. Dollar. I'll be in the kitchen. It's nice meeting you, Mr. Dollar. Nice meeting you, Mrs. Rizzinelli. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. You're with the insurance company? Yes, World Insurance and Indemnity. How can I help? Just answer some questions. I'm sure you've had your fill of answering questions by now. It's all right. Uh, You returned about an hour after the fire. Is that correct? That's right. Where had you been? I'd driven to Pasadena. Bill, he had to work so he couldn't go with me. A few days ago, Mr. McEdwards, that's Bill's father, returned from a location trip to Korea and gave us an antique, an old Chinese Buddha. We wanted to find out about it, so I took it to a friend of ours in Pasadena who collects Oriental art. A Buddha? Yes. Bill's dad found it in Korea and gave it to us as a sort of belated wedding gift. We'd only been married for six months. Uh, When did you leave for Pasadena? Oh, around four in the afternoon. I would have left sooner, but I had to clean house and fix Bill's lunch. I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar, but it's still a little hard to talk about it. Just a few more questions. I'm all right. Did anything unusual happen? Unusual? Well, anything your husband might have said before you left. Anything out of the ordinary that happened? I don't understand. Why do you think something unusual might have happened? Is there something I don't know about this, Mr. Dollar? No, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just checking everything. There was a fire. My husband lost his life. Are you considering that it might not have been an accident? I'm not considering anything. I'm just checking. Uh, This Buddha, where is it now? Charlie Wilkins, our friend in Pasadena, has it. He wasn't sure, but he thought that it might be very rare, and he asked me to leave it for a few days. Charles Wilkins? Yes. And your husband's father brought the Buddha back from Korea? Yes. Is uh, Mr. McEdward Sr. in the service? No, he's a production man for international pictures. He was making a documentary film in Korea. I'd like to talk to him. I think he's at the studio now. He lives on Beverly Glen. Well, I'll try to reach him at the studio. Thank you very much for your time and patience. Certainly. Goodbye, Mr. Dollar. I left the attractive valley home and drove back to the hotel, where I put in a call to International Studios for John McEdwards, the victim's father. His secretary told me he was at home, but that she'd deliver my message and have him call me. In about five minutes, McEdwards called, and I made an appointment to see him. I drove out sunset toward Westwood Village and turned north on Beverly Glen. John McEdwards lived in a small house in the middle of a lot of acreage. The reason for the acreage met me at the high closed gate. Four giant Great Danes faced me behind a steel fence. Their owner, a tall, wiry, middle-aged man, bounded down the steps of the house and ordered his animals to be silent. Uh, easy, easy. Come on, Simpson. You, Mr. Dollar? Uh, yeah. I'll be with you in a minute. Come on. Get over there. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. That's it. My name, Mr. Dollar. Uh, wouldn't it be just as well if we talked out here? Uh, they won't hurt you. Come on in. Uh, easy, sir. Easy. Well. Easy. Uh, nice doggy. They're <laughs> all right. Just as friendly as they can be. Ah, well, my gosh, they are. I'm McEdwards. Glad to know you, Mr. McEdwards. Oh, easy, boy. Sammy, Sammy, quiet. I'm just shaking his hand. Come on into the house. Fine. Sure hate to run into that pack if you weren't around. They wouldn't do anything unless maybe you tried to break in the house or something. There's an article in the paper not too long ago about some guy trying to break in the house. The owner's great dame spotted him going in the window and broke his neck. Broke his neck? Yeah. No, 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 Samson, you stay out. That's all. Samson? <laughs> yeah, Samson. 
Delilah Cleopatra. I call her Patty. And the Duchess. Sit down. Thanks. The Duchess is the mother. She threw 12 her first litter. I, I, I kept three. Well, you didn't come here to talk about dogs. Can I get you a beer? No, thanks. You want to talk about Bill? Yes, yes. Wonderful boy. Terrible thing. I'm just trying to keep busy and not think about it. It's pretty tough. You raise a boy and see him through all these years. Yes, sir. What do you want to talk about? How long were you in Korea, Mr. McEdmund? About three months. I understand you brought back an old Buddha. Yeah. Why? I saw your daughter-in-law, she told me. How's she taking it? Pretty well, I'd say. Yeah, what a wonderful girl. Never thought Bill would get married, but he sure picked the right one when he did. Tough, isn't it? Only been married six months. Tough on Pat. Mm. Tell me something about this Buddha. Well, it it was funny how I found it. I was helping build a dam. We had to block up a small stream and get the water to rise for a shot we needed. I was digging up some rocks a few yards away from the road, and I uncovered the old Buddha. It was in a box, nice neat hole. Your daughter-in-law said she took it to Charles Wilkins, that he thought it was very rare. Yeah. Why are you so interested in the Buddha, Mr. Dollar? Oh, just a casual interest. My company sent me out to investigate the fire, and when your daughter-in-law mentioned the Buddha, I got interested. Your company insured my son's life. That's right. You didn't know Bill, did you? No. Nice boy. Easy going. Never thought about insurance or things like that until he met Pat. Then he settled down. Best thing that ever happened to him. Are you sure you won't have a beer, Mr. Toller? Oh, no, really. Thanks, it's the same. Those darn dogs. There must be someone at the gate. Oh, it's, it's Pat. Hi. Hi. Oh, get back. Come on, come on. Shove him back. Hi. Hello, honey. Hi, Dad. Oh. Hello, Mr. Dollar. Hello. Mr. Dollar, I just had a visit from Police Chief Anderson. He came just after you left. That's why you asked me all those questions. He told you? Yes, he did. What is it? Dad, the fire wasn't an accident. What? Well, Pat, what is it? What do you mean it wasn't an accident? Would you tell him, Mr. Dollar? If you'd like me to. What is it, Mr. Dollar? The fire wasn't an accident, Mr. McEdwards. Somebody deliberately... Bill was murdered. Oh, honey, honey. <laughs> Mr. Dollar. Yeah. But why? Mr. Dollar, do you think it had something to do with that Buddha? I don't know, Mrs. McEdwards. I'm trying to find out. Friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a refreshing, delicious treat you can enjoy just about any time. Even when you're busy working, you can slip a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint in your mouth and enjoy that pleasant chewing. The lively, full-bodied spearmint flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The good, smooth chewing helps relieve pent-up tension, gives you satisfaction. As a result, you seem to feel more relaxed and get more enjoyment out of what you're doing. So enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum while you work and at other times, too. Get a few packages next time you're at the store. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. John McEdwards walked me down to the gate and through the Great Danes. Then I drove to Pasadena and met Mr. Charles Wilkins, a 
authority on Oriental art? I can't say absolutely. I'm still doing research, but I believe the Buddha to be the original Amita image Buddha. What does that mean? Well, in Buddhism, there's more than one Buddha. Each may have an earthly life, but there is never more than one in the world at any time. And Buddhas come into being at irregular intervals and only when there is a special need for their presence. In the Mayana system of Buddhism, there are 300 million Buddhas. But the Amita is one of the five Buddhas of contemplation. And the Buddha Mr. McEdwards found is the original Amita? I'm almost positive that it is. I, I believe its origin dates back to sometime around 200 B.C. What would you say it's worth? Well, that would depend. To a responsible collector, oh, really no way of telling. Well, let's say you were a wealthy, responsible collector, Mr. Wilkins. Let's just say responsible. How much would you pay for the original Amita Buddha? Well, if I could buy it for, say, 150, maybe 200,000. 200,000 dollars? I would be getting a bargain. I would go as high as half a million if I had the money. Well, Mr. Wilkins, thank you. This thing is worth half a million? That's what the man said. Well, now, that's what I call a motive. Yeah. If the Buddha is really an art treasure, then the U.S. Customs Office is going to be very interested. That's their affair. I'm interested in who killed Bill McEdwards. Well, I don't know where this will take us, but at least it's a lead. Only real one I've had so far. We questioned all of the victim's associates, and what we could find out, he didn't have an enemy in the world. No love rivals, no discarded girlfriends, no money troubles, nothing. But he had the Buddha. Yeah. Question is, who knew he had it, besides his wife and father? Well, how about the location troupe old man McEdwards was with in Korea? Mm-hmm. I'll check with the studio right away. Yeah. But it's not just somebody who knew he had it. It's somebody who knew the value of it. Somebody who's hept to Oriental art, huh? Maybe the guy who buried it. Why would anybody stash a prize like that in a hole in the ground? Well, for safekeeping, maybe. There's been a war in Korea. Yeah, well, thanks for telling me. But say it was the person who buried the thing. Why would he have to steal it? He could just step up and claim his property. If he was the rightful owner. But suppose he stole it in the first place. Yeah. Well, I like guessing games as well as the next one, but it's time I got to work. Where are you going to start? First, the motion picture company, then we'll check all incoming passengers from the Orient last week. Ships, planes, military personnel. That shouldn't take more than a month. You got any better ideas? At the moment, no. Then I want another talk with McEdwards Sr., I thought I'd run out and see him this afternoon. Yeah, do that. If you turn up anything, let me know. Sure. If I do. Come in, Mr. Dollar. I was just finishing some dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't be silly. Come on in and have a cup of coffee with me. If you haven't had your dinner, I'll be glad to throw on a couple of chops. No, thanks. I don't get hungry early. Have a seat. Thanks. You want some coffee, don't you? Yeah, that'll be fine. I'm not much of a bachelor. Wife died three years ago, and I still haven't got used to doing things like cooking, keeping house. Usually eat out. You take uh, cream or sugar? Black is fine. Pat was in a pretty bad way after you left, but she finally came around all right. That's tough. Yeah, it is. I wanted to talk some more about... Well, darn. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes, hello, dear. Yes, yes, she worked. She hasn't. Well, she left here about... Oh, I'd say about 5.30, maybe quarter six. Well, she might have stopped off someplace. No, 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 don't worry about it. No, she was just fine when she left. Oh, sure. No, uh, I'm all right, dear. Sure, sure, I will. Bye. Funny. Hmm? That was Pat's mother. She isn't home yet. When did she leave here? Oh, about two hours ago. Well, we're all on edge. Oh, I don't think there's anything to worry about. No. She's taking pretty well. 
When she left, she was fine. I talked with Mr. McEdwards for about another hour. He told me everything he could about the Buddha and his trip to Korea. He looked dead tired. His eyes were beginning to show the strain. I decided to say goodnight and forget the rest of the interrogation until the next morning when the phone rang again. Hello? Eh? What? I'm sorry, I didn't... Yes, that's right. Yes. But, 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 but wait. Hello. 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 Something wrong? I'm not supposed to say anything. What was it? I think you're a nice guy, Johnny. Can I trust you? Certainly. They said not to tell anyone, but I've got to trust someone. I, I can't think for myself. Too much has happened. You... You won't take this to the police. I can't promise that. Well, I don't think you will after I tell you. I don't know who that was on the phone, but it was some guy, and and he said they've got Pat. What do you mean, they've got Pat? Kidnapped. Now, look, exactly what was said. Good gosh, you, you, you read about things like this, but you, you never think they're going to happen. Now, take it easy. Oh, I'm all right. I, I just haven't had much sleep. I can't think straight. Now, the man that called... He said he had Pat, that she was all right for me not to say anything to anyone, or she'd get hurt. He said for me to get the Buddha. And that is it. They said to get it, and they'd see that Pat was returned home safely. What did they say to do with it? Just to get it, they'd contact me. What are you going to do? Get the Buddha. Wait a minute. Let me go. Well, they might be watching. They'd know I told you about the phone call. They won't do anything to Pat until they get the Buddha. I'll call Wilkins. He's probably in the book. Well, don't you think it would be better if I went? Yeah, maybe it would. But I'm going to follow you. If anything happens, I want to be around. All right, let's go. Wilkins turned over the Buddha while I waited outside his house, watching for anyone who might have followed. The drive back to McEdward's home was uneventful. No single car stayed with us for any length of time from the freeway to Beverly Glen. While McEdwards opened the gates and drove his car into the garage, I parked in a secluded spot some 50 yards away from the house and walked back, where I met McEdwards at the foot of the front steps. You think they were followed? No, I don't think so. Well, I've got the Buddha. What do I do with it? Wait till you hear from them. They said they'd contact you. Yeah. Think I should call Pat's mother and tell her what's happened? No, not yet. No sense in worrying her until we find out what's going to happen. But, Dad... Huh? Good evening, Mr. McEdwards. John McEdwards had visitors, two men. One rather slight, fairly young. The other an enormous man, a good six and a half feet that must have weighed well over 300 pounds. The slight one held a 38 pointed in our direction. Pat started across to McEdwards, but the big man stopped her. Sit down. What is this? Allow me to introduce myself. Alan Sutka. And this is my friend, Don Roach. We've come for the Buddha. I let him in with my key, Dad. I had to. Sure. It's, it's, it's okay. Who's your friend, Mr. McEdwards? Yes, I warned you not to confide in anyone. This is Mr. Dollar. He's just an old friend. How unfortunate for Mr. Dollar. You've gone to a lot of trouble to get this Buddha. Indeed, I have. Nearly five years, to be exact. Now, what is your interest in this matter, Mr. Dollar? Purely professional. Are you a policeman? Not quite. I see. Mr. McEdwards isn't responsible for my getting mixed up in this. I was here when you called and forced him into telling me. As I said before, most unfortunate. Now, Mr. McEdwards, I'll take the Buddha. Not yet, you won't. Oh? Perhaps you don't understand. Yeah, that's it exactly. Which one of you bums killed my son? Killed your son. He was killed, Sutker. The fire didn't work. The police know all about it. Indeed. Come on, Mr. Sucker. Let's get this over with and get out of well, here. Patience, patience. You'll have to forgive my young friend. How did you know Mr. McEdwards had the Buddha? Its discovery made the Tokyo papers. I did some checking, found out when Mr. McEdwards was returning to the States, flew here to meet him. Why did you kill my son? I don't mind telling you. Under the circumstances, I cannot afford to let any of you live. Your son discovered Roach here in the act of burglarizing his home. He protested too much. Roach had to kill him. It wasn't premeditated. We assumed the Buddha was in the house. 
We knew that Mr. McEdwards here had delivered it to his son the night before. Why, you... Take it easy, take it easy. The dollar's right. Should you get out of hand, Roach will shoot you on the spot. Now, if you don't mind, I'll have that Buddha. Oh, Dad. Without hysterics, if you don't mind. Just one more question. How did you know about the Buddha? Mr. Dollar, I've known about that particular Amita Buddha for many, many years. Another man knew about it also. Unfortunately, he was the first to locate it. His name was Wu Sung, an oriental collector. He discovered the Amita Buddha in a Tibetan temple shortly after World War II and stole it, then smuggled it out of Tibet and into Korea. I followed him, made him a handsome offer, but he refused to sell. He died under rather mysterious circumstances, but I didn't have the chance to leave Korea with the Buddha. The war. Very astute, yes. The communists suddenly attacked, and there was absolutely no way I could get the Buddha out of the country without someone discovering it. So you buried it? A few hundred yards from Wu Sung's home. I imagine the house has long since vanished from the face of the earth. I bided my time in Tokyo, waiting for hostilities to cease. But, as fate will have it, Mr. McEdwards uncovered my prize. Mr. Satka, you talk too much. I enjoy it, Roach. And after all, what good will the information be to our friends? Come on, let's get the Buddha. Yes. Now, Mr. McEdwards, you will either turn over the Buddha or Roach will kill you immediately. Give it to him. Here. Thank you. Now, if you'll all lead the way down into the yard, we'll proceed to my car and take a short trip. Oh, Dad. It's all right, honey. Now, if you please. Beautiful animals, Mr. McEdwards. I'm glad they were pinned up when we arrived. They could have caused no end of trouble. They still can! McEdwards had felt the big boy right in his enormous middle, and Roach stepped in and swung his gun. As McEdwards dropped, the dogs penned in behind the tall fences went crazy. Samson, the big male, went over the ten-foot fence like it wasn't even there. Before I knew it, I was up to my elbows in great game. Sammy! Sammy, let him in! Sammy, stop it! Get back! Get back! Hey, Delilah, get back there! Are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm all right. Mr. Dollar? Yeah. Why didn't they go after me? They knew you were helping. <laughs> my face, my face, get a doctor, get a this doctor. This one's pretty bad. My How's face. the big one? Huh. You were right about Danes. What do you mean? The one you were telling me about that broke the man's neck. The fat man ran into the same sort of situation. He's dead? He sure is. Well, that's the way it should be. Samson was my son's talk. Expense account item two, $33.85 hotel bill. Item three and four, $299.75. Car rental, plane fare, and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $527.15. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a refreshing, delicious treat you can enjoy just about any time. Chew a few sticks of Wrigley's Spearmint during the day and see how the good chewing helps you keep feeling fresh and alert. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, and sweetens your breath. The chewing itself gives you a nice little boost, helps you keep going at your best. Millions of people get real chewing enjoyment out of Wrigley's Spearmint gum every day, and we know that you'll enjoy it, too. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint chewing gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were James Nusser, John Stevenson, Jeanette Nolan, Sammy Hill, Bill James, Herb Butterfield, Robert Griffin, and Edgar Barrier. 
Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network. Welcome back. Well, an interesting episode written by Blake Edwards. It is always nice to hear functional, uh, loving family relationships on Johnny Dollar. You know, every hundred episodes or so that'll happen. The resolution with the Great Danes was uh, interesting. Before I had a dog, uh, Great Danes were dogs that kind of made me nervous just because of the size of the animal. The ones I've meant it's getting rocky, tend to be these somewhat awkward, gentle, giant creatures. But then again, I'm not endangering the lives of their owner. We don't know what type of training they had. Plus, it did sound like from the episode that this was inspired by an incident where someone in real life broke into a house. It's kind of one of those interesting cases where a writer manages to tell you what his inspiration for the episode was by having a character cite the news article that he read. And even though this was a Blake Edwards script, I, this one probably feels less like it, it could have been on Richard Diamond than most of the other episodes he's written for Johnny Dollar. Though the insurance angle is not the strongest in this episode, so I suppose it could have uh, been some Richard Diamond or other detective script that was adapted to this. Well, now I would like to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you so much to Zant. Zant has been one of our Patreon supporters since February 2017. Currently supporting the program at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thanks for your support, Zant. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, be sure to rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. We'll be back next Friday with another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. And coming up tomorrow, we'll be bringing you an episode of Tales of the Texas Rangers, where... It is shortly before midnight, August 27th, 1938, at the Santa Fe Freight Yards in Lubbock, Texas. A deadhead freight hauling empties back to the west coast from Galveston has just pulled into the yard. The brakeman and a railroad detective are making a routine check of the cars for free-riding hobos. If I was a yard dick, I'd be snoozing in the roundhouse. You ain't found a free rider in months. Yeah, so what? I get paid to check and I check. Oh, you know, bows on the freights always hop off before we pull into the yards. I ever think one of them might fall asleep in a car and not have anybody to wake him up? Well, could be. Yeah, flashy light in this one. Okay. Hey, see? Nobody. Mm. Now, the car up ahead is the last of the boxcars. I walked the flats and gondolas while we was rolling, so I know that they're clear. Hey, hey, why's the door rolled shut on this one? Well, I don't know now. It shouldn't be. Now, let's get her open. Now, I'll throw your light around. Yeah. Mm. Nobody riding, huh? <laughs> Come on. All right, Bo, on your feet. And throw that light right on him. Yeah. Well, no wonder it didn't move just an old duffel bag. Yeah. Uh, what's a duffel bag doing on a deadhead freight? Ain't there something in it, huh? Hey, hey, come here. Feel this. All right. Feels like a body. Hey, you got a knife on you? Yeah, here. It's a good thing we didn't pass this car. The top of the bag sewed up tight. I have to cut right through the side. Yeah, <laughs> It's a young woman. Yeah, stabbed to death. And threw that light around the car. Well, what are you looking for? There's no blood any place. She wasn't killed on the train. Somebody must have loaded the body on to get rid of it. Yeah, so the murder can't be pinned down to any definite area. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Send your technical questions to andrew at greatdetectives.net. 
and follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.